Chairman for the opportunity to testify on the successes and challenges of the Magnuson-Stevens Act. My name is Ben Martens, and I'm the Executive Director of the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association, an industry-based nonprofit that identifies and fosters ways to restore the fisheries of the Gulf of Maine and sustain Maine's fishing communities for future generations. Additionally, MCFA is a founding member of the Fishing Community Coalition, a coalition of like-minded industry groups from Maine to the Gulf Coast to Alaska who believe in long-term preservation of our fishing communities through stewardship. My comments also come directly from the MSA legislative package crafted by the members of FCC. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, I would like to submit this legislative package for the subcommittee's consideration with a focus on our priority areas, which include accountability, data and monitoring, forage fish protections, and strengthening fishing communities. I go further into detail on these priority areas and others in my written testimony. Recently, I was with Randy Cushman, a fourth generation fisherman from Port Clyde, Maine, and the only ground fish fisherman left in a town that was built off the landings of species like flounder, haddock, and cod. Randy was reflecting on his past and ended up telling me stories about his father, Captain Lee Cushman, who, as fish stocks were declining and jobs were being lost, confessed to his oldest son, if I'd known then what I know now about fish and about fishing, I would have done a lot of things differently. We all would have done a lot of things differently. We just didn't know what we were capable of. We now understand what we are capable of, not only as far as catching fish, but also as to how to rebuild our marine resources and protect our fishing communities. We understand that it takes good data and accountability to effectively manage our nation's fisheries, and a strong Magnuson-Stevens Act has delivered. Today, less than 16% of our nation's assessed fish stocks are overfished, and less than 9% are subject to overfishing. No matter what else we identify as important within this bill, fishermen big and small, commercial and recreational, can all agree that we need robust and healthy fish stocks to sustain our fishing future. MSA has had great success in achieving that goal, and today I'm here to ask you to support a strong MSA rooted in science and accountability in this reauthorization. Now, I don't mean to suggest that MSA is perfect. Some of our most iconic fisheries, including the groundfish fishery back home in Maine, are struggling to rebuild. But New England groundfish is the exception that proves the rule since poor accountability within that fishery has hampered rebuilding efforts and undermined science and management. Instead of pushing for change, I want to embrace our successes and lean into a management model that demands accurate and timely information. Fisheries management is a data-hungry industry when done correctly, and it's our hope that the MSA reauthorization will focus on ensuring that data fishermen rely on for successful businesses continues to improve as the world's oceans and ecosystems change at a rapid pace. Maine is known for our lobsters, but in 1995, lobster only represented 30% of Maine's landings. In contrast, by 2015, 87% of Maine's landings could be attributed to that one fishery. During this period, Maine lost hundreds of permits for species like scallops and groundfish that add to community economic diversity and create protections for future ecosystem shifts. Language currently exists in MSA that was intended to allow communities to preserve historic asset access. To date, it's never been used. We hope that you will address this provision to help allow communities to engage in this process because once those rights are lost, they are lost forever. This is something that we cannot afford to continue. Now, while Randy may be the only ground fish fisherman in Port Clyde, we're working to ensure that he isn't the last. The next generation of fishermen face daunting challenges, including the high cost of, of uh, entry, financial risks, and limited entry level opportunities. The Young Fishermen's Development Act, championed by Congressman Young, uh, aims to create a national program modeled after one that already exists for farmers and ranchers. This program would be exclusively dedicated to assisting, educating, and training the next generation of commercial fishermen. I want to thank the congressman for introducing this language, and I would ask that the committee give it full consideration to this bull bill. This is very important to the work that we're doing in Maine and elsewhere. We appreciate the work that has gone in the current legislative drafts, but MCFA and the FCC cannot support them as they currently stand. The reauthorization of the Magnus Stevenson Act is an opportunity to reinforce what we have learned. We need accountability throughout our fisheries. We need stronger protections for forage stocks and important habitat. We need science-based decision-making, and we need increased protections for our fishing communities. Our work here is not done, and we cannot afford to look back and say, if only we had known better, because we do know. Randy is building off the knowledge his father left him on how to be a better steward of the marine resources. Let us build off the successes of our past learn from our failures, and ensure that tight lines and full nets are part of our futures. Thank you for your time today.